HealingYourself.Life provides information for awareness, educational, and support purposes only and does not diagnose or prescribe treatment for any medical condition. Viewers are encouraged to do their own due diligence and consult with their own medical caregivers before making personal treatment decisions. But they're afraid. The problem is, is most docs just simply go, I've never done that, so I'm not going to do it now. And you go, well, what's wrong with it? I don't know, but I'm not going to do that. You know, and that's where you end up. And, and so I don't expect to find much cooperation, for, and especially now that they're all working for the big green machine. It was one thing when we were all in private practice, but I think I'm the last private physician in, you know, northwest Ohio. I think they've all joined the machine someplace now. You have to to survive. Most people don't have the latitude to do what I did and go to cash. You know, it takes, it really takes a big adjustment. And they're afraid, they were, on, they were afraid to make the jump. As a responsible person with growing concerns for your privacy and personal liberty, you want to know where we're headed and what you can do about it. We ask the experts what you need to do to take prudent and responsible action to safeguard your family's wealth and well-being and what basic first steps will help you to be aware and prepared. ReluctantPreppers.com Which uh, types of medication are the most essential in a low technology, low infrastructure yes. type environment? For, you, know, you know, if you take... This product right here, clindamycin, and buy one of those for 39 cents and drop a 300 milligram capsule of clindamycin into it, you have enough topical antibody to treat 10 people for a month. And you got nothing in it except for a $1 capsule. Now you go buy the same product and it's 65 bucks, right? So there's a lot of workarounds. There's a lot of things that we could do I make another topical ointment. Wound management is always a big issue when you're on your own. You don't want to let a wound get out of hand. Right. Right. And chloramphenicol, the old antibiotic that they took off the market because it hits anthrax. And when they realized it killed anthrax back in the 60s, the feds took it off the market and declared it too dangerous to use. And they've got to stockpile those simple defense shelters. They know it's their go-to resistant drug. They've driven the price way, way up expensive. Uh, I make three pound tubs of it to take into Haiti and then I'll just put enough to put in the medicine bottle to give somebody for wound management works like a charm. A lot of this stuff, we could put a package together. And then you, you have to individualize because, you know, what if you're hypothyroid? What's your management of that? Mm -hmm. You know, well, the answer is, you know, that while five years of thyroid from the pharmacy costs $100 a month, $66,000, the same amount of thyroid bought in bulk is $217 instead of $6,000. So you spend $217 and now you own five years of thyroid, and if you're hyperthyroid, you're not going to die. You know? Mm -hmm. And so. You know, the question is, is at what level do people want to play? Right. And that's why I kind of like the idea of let's develop, you know, a home safety basic supply set. And then here is stuff that you're going to have to either get your family doctor to cooperate right. with right. you. If that works, right. good luck. I'm not expecting that. Okay. That would be the exception. It would be it would be doctors like yourself who, in most ways, have been in the system and then decided that there's there's a need to address wellness as the primary goal, not just keeping the feeding the system for the sake of the system. Right. But they're afraid. The problem is, is most docs just simply go, "I've never done that, so I'm not going to do it now." And you go, well, "What's wrong with it? I don't know, but I'm not going to do that." Mm -hmm. You know, and that's where you end up. And and so I don't expect to find much cooperation, for, and especially now that they're all working for the big green machine. Sure. It was one thing when we were all in private practice, but I think I'm the last private physician in you know, Northwest Ohio. I think they've all joined the machine someplace now. You have to to survive. Most people don't have the latitude to do what I did and go to cash. You know, it, takes, it really takes a big adjustment. And they're afraid. They were, on, they were afraid to make the jump. You know? So, uh, and then you'd have that third level of care where you go, oh, you really are serious. You really do want to be prepared, okay? And at that point in time, I go, well, you know, that's when you're going to really want one 4 suture, lidocaine, syringes. You got to be able to close a wound, mm -hmm. you know, et cetera. And so, and that's all legal, you know. I, there's, the, there's, you know, really no limit most people have a family member who uh, 
died or was injured and then became well and left 20 Vicodin in the bottle. Don't throw those away. Repurpose those, you know, because those are very hard to come up with, you know. Mm -hmm. And you really need some kind of pain relief. You've got, you know, all pain syndromes go through a front end 48 hours that can be pretty brutal and then things settle down. Mm -hmm. yeah. You mentioned earlier colloidal silver. You said that could be a topic unto itself. You want to take a minute or two to tell oh, us I about that? It. I love it. It's, it's been touted in the industry as a cure -all. It is not. It tends to not kill as much as it stops replication. I used it in Lyme disease for about two years and was real tickled with myself that everybody was better. And then a guy came along and pointed out to me, have you tried stopping it? One day after I stopped it, it was just like the day I started it. And I realized I was treading water and I quit using it. Um, but um, if uh, that's Lyme disease, nothing kills Lyme disease, okay? But if I've got Ebola, I'll be glad to stop it in its tracks, okay? You know, um, we have, you know, there are a lot of things that come along that we don't even know what they are. Well, the nice thing about colloidal silver is it's non-toxic in the right form. We'll talk about the right form in humans, but all of the microbes have a ribosome 70 mitochondrial structure that silver clutches up and humans don't own that system. So it's not toxic. Now, there are two kinds of silver, and you can tell which one simply by pouring it out in a clear cup, okay? The colloidal silver that is perfectly clear and looks like water was made by putting silver in water and putting a current through it. And you end up with silver chloride, which is absorbed into the body as a salt. The silver goes deep into your tissue, and it causes the diseases we know about where people turn blue, then black with argillism. It is very, very toxic. It will never come out of your body. It's a terrible idea. Don't ever ingest it, okay? But companies like purestcollards.com and the better manufacturers, they put a laser underwater against a silver ingot and knock individual atoms of silver off into water as a suspension. This will look a brown black, and if you were looking through two inches of it, you wouldn't be able to read newsprint beyond it. It's about that dark. Uh, that's true quality colloidal silver. Those atoms of silver go into your body and are excreted unchanged in your urine and your stool, and they don't accumulate. Okay, and the amount you're getting is really, really trivial, but it's exactly that form of silver that screws up the ribosome 70 system. And um, you can buy this stuff in pints, quarts, gallons, and five gallon carboys. Every time that you go up in size, your price drops by about 30%. And so people would be smart to get together in groups mm -hmm. and buy a five-gallon carboy and split it up and put it in containers and save a bunch of money. But if there's a big, bad virus running around, I'm going to, at the time I'm exposed, I'm going to get everybody in my community taking it every day and, you know, ingesting, you know, 20, 30 cc's a day while the risk goes past. And again, the mechanism that you're looking for there is, is that it, interferes with the reproduction, the, du the duplication, with the duplication, the duplication of, of the, the of both microbes. Viruses and bacteria and parasites and spirochetes and fungi. I mean, this is a very broad spectrum. It's also, if you get a burn and you go to the emergency room, what do they send you home with? Silvidine. All And what does it do? When you put it on your skin, it turns black because it turns into silver chloride. Okay. And of course, silver is what makes x-ray film and photographic film, okay? When it goes to its salt form, it turns black, right? And so, um, you know, this liquid, you could just rub it on a wound and it's going to work as an anti-infective. And it's not harmful to the tissue. It's a nice product. Everybody should own it in survival mode. Long shelf life? Oh, forever. A million years. I don't know how it could go bad. What can spoil in it? They can't get infected. It's just water and a metal. Nothing's going to grow in there. You know, whatever container it's in, determines the shelf life. When the container rots, it's gone. Uh, back to your original topic where you're talking about of a home emergency medical supply. Some of these things people can put together that are available over the counter. For others, they would need to partner with, if they can find a family physician 
who will partner with them to help them obtain what they would need. And there's ways you've talked about, about uh, stretching small amounts to go farther and that sort of thing by um, and storing. Start well, up. I think the first thing is you have to ask the question, what meds am I on that I can't live without? Actually, that's what I was going to ask. Is what and about I, people who have special needs or you know, special if conditions? You're, if you're um, uh, menopausal and you knew that menopause was tough and that you were hot flashing or had osteoporosis or got memory disturbance when you lost your estrogen, sure, I want you on custom compounded triast progesterone DHEA, but that day won't be happening. That stuff has 60 days shelf life. So when people come to me and say, I need my survival form, I go, let's go buy you a bottle of a thousand two milligram esterase, okay? Pure estradiol and a quarter of a tablet once a day is gonna keep you out of trouble. So now that's 4,000 doses. So I just got 10 years of estrogen. Uh, you can probably buy that bottle of a thousand estrogen in bulk for $30. Gee? Okay, so now we first we can you come in and say, you know, my blood pressure's been 220 over 120 in my life, and it's controlled a day on these two meds. I go, I think we need to get you a five year supply of that med. Okay, so first of all, our question is, what must you have, especially people who are hypothyroid? Now, insulin dependent diabetics, whoo, they're in trouble. Okay, they're in big trouble. But everybody else, we can figure out how to store this stuff. We can figure out how to get it. So, you know, our first thing is, can you go to your family doctor and sit down and say, I'm concerned. You saw the water problem that happened. You watched society come to a stop for two days. You know, I've seen Ferguson. I'm just concerned. Would you write me a prescription? And then if you go to your family pharmacist, you can't walk into Rexall and do this, okay? You need to have a relationship with a family pharmacist. And if you go in and say, look, I'm, I'm concerned about survival and my family doctor wrote me a prescription for, for this, can you order it for me? You know, then the question is, is will he do that? Mm -hmm. And then there's the storing of it, because you mentioned there's some things that really are more sensitive to... Really just the doxycycline, minocycline. The rest of them, I just go, you know, get them, get a little, you know, six-pack beer cooler and, you know, uh, put everything you want to store in it and run duct tape around the edge of the seam and set that thing on a back shelf high in your basement and or an interior closet if you're, you know, on a crawl and set it on the floor in an interior closet where temperatures don't fluctuate. And there you go. That's what you got. You got what you got. It is what it is. It's one of my favorite sayings in Haiti. You know, people say, we don't have this. And I go, no, you don't. Now what's plan B? Right. <laughs> it is what it is.